Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear to own his cause, or blush to speak his name? Shall I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease? Whilst others fought to win the prize And sailed on bloody seas Truth. Everybody wants to believe that they are speaking it, that they believe it, that they know it. But there's another principle we call standing for truth, which implies a little bit of costliness to it. Now, everybody wants to stand for truth a little bit, but when the cost becomes really great, then it becomes, uh, when, when truth comes and presents this evidence and its logic, then the response is, uh, that's unthinkable. Hmm. You ever, you ever, you ever run across that in your experience? This is Mike yeah. Bray. Mike Bray has uh, burned down a few abortion clinics and spent time in jail. He wrote a book called A Time to Kill, which is uh, has a lot of scripture in it, and. Has anyone refuted the scripture that you presented in that book? Well, the the uh, essential truth, I think, that that was put out in the book was that um, that human life is is uh, worthy of protection, uh, and, but that he, and. and for that reason, there are laws against taking human life, not only from man, but laws from God. Uh, and yet, that human life, the value of that human life is, is, uh, is, I guess you could say, conditioned or defined in such that, in such a way that uh, guilty human life may be taken. Uh, and so. Yeah, there, there's uh, th th those issues need to be clarified as to, to, um, uh, yeah, the, the is is human life absolutely valuable, or, or is it, uh, or does it have a, a uh, uh, certain parameters that could be uh, written around it? And now, uh, for what you're saying now doesn't sound controversial at all. Right. Uh, when when you start <laughs> talking about who exactly counts as a human. And someone suggests, well, maybe how about the human beings inside the womb? Then it starts getting controversial, especially when you start suggesting that they ought to be protected with the same vigor that you might protect a born person. Then it becomes, becomes so, so costly to agree with that your conclusions become unthinkable. I mean, there are some. There is, there is some evidence and some logic that is just so, is so serious that it hardly, it's ir it becomes irrelevant whether it's true. Mm -hmm. It's unthinkable. Right. It's costly. We can, too costly. Uh, uh, this is Mike Bray, and then we have Regina Dinwiddie here. Regina has spent an awful lot of time outside abortion clinics. You've had a radio show in Kansas City about abortion for many years. You were the first defendant under the FACE law for uh, using a bullhorn outside an abortion clinic. You've spent, and, and you've, had, you've had concrete barricade dropped on your back when you were trying to save lives. So you, there's a little cost that you've paid. I, 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 I'm tr I'm str there's something I'm, I'm curious about. I don't have a conclusion about this. I'm, I'm curious. I, I want to figure out how to put something into words. But I'm just barely grasping. And then we have Kitty over here, Regina's mother. She spent a lot of time on the on the line with uh, over abortion, and uh, yeah, has this 
very interesting approach in talking with the people outside the clinics. And uh, you've probably paid a little bit of a price yourself over the years for your your work. And I'm curious about the testimonies of all of you. Where you came to this point, I mean, Jesus talked about a cost to be paid. He said, he who does not he who sets his hand to the plow and turns back is not fit for the kingdom of God. He said, who starts building a tower and does not count the cost first to see if he can complete it? Now, because if he can't, why? He will, uh, people will laugh at him. Every preacher says, it's up in the pulpit and says, I'm going to speak, I'm, I have the courage to speak the truth and uh, and we're you're hearing the truth here, and every talk show, radio talk show host, uh, or Bill O'Reilly, this is the no spin zone. Mm -hmm. Rush Limbaugh says, uh, my uh, views articulated here are documented being ninety nine point six percent right. And one time he confessed, well. Uh, now, sometimes I'm actually wrong, but you won't hear about it on my show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, I think what, you're, what you're getting at, and maybe we can explore a little bit, is um, the, the relative values of, of different qualities. Let me see if I can, if I can put that in a more sensible uh, a way. Uh, we, we have qualities like truth. We have qualities like justice. Um, life, um, freedom, um, peace, I say justice, Yes. okay, these, these things that we value and these things that we maybe strive for and like, like to, to uh, see come into existence and, and to, to be maintained, let's say, what about when these things come into conflict? What about when Peace, for instance, and the maintaining of peace comes in conflict with justice. Sometimes we see war. We see conflict when these two two uh, principles are coming in conflict. In the case of, I think what you what we're getting at here with regard to uh, truth and how it plays out in in the whole arena of of abortion is, if we say. Uh, it is true that a human being is a human being created in God's image and therefore has value and, and, is, and can't be disposed of without due process from conception all the way to a natural death. If, if that's a truth, um, but the maintaining of that truth involves sacrifice, even jail, uh, the, the, the lack of, of freedom that we might enjoy, the lack of peace that we might otherwise enjoy. Uh, when these th things come in conflict, um, we're sometimes putting two values together that, 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 that war against one another. I like peace. I like freedom. Um, I like life. I like life for other people. Uh, but what happens when uh, the two are, are warring against one another? Is that, is that kind of what you're looking at, exploring that kind of thing? Mm, maybe so. You know, most people uh, stand for truth vicariously. They listen to their pastor allege uh, that he's speaking the truth, and they think, my golly, I believe the truth too, because I, I agree with him. Or uh, the, the talk show host boldly taking risks and saying things which liberals don't like and uh, people listening from the safety of their own living rooms, not themselves paying any cost. Uh, many people experience uh, truth only as a tool by which to judge others, not as, as something which will bring themselves a cost that they will have to pay. Let's talk about marketplace truth, where you see here we are very, very rich. We are very rich people on Dave Leach's show. He only, he only invites rich people on his show. We are rich 
as all church members are, and I'm sure you've all heard that that uh, all that people are in it for is is to be enriched. Well, we're rich because we have God's glory, and and we have a reward waiting for us. But to take the truth to the marketplace is going to cost you your riches. It has cost me jobs. It has cost Mike Bray homes. His home has been ransacked in the middle of the night, ransacked in the middle of the night, his children upset, his property stolen by the government, standing for a lie because he stood for the truth. That's what I would call a cost. My husband, who was uh, the best policeman that ever was called by God, in my opinion, was cost promotions to sergeant, to lieutenant, for years of worthy service, even though uh, when the other sergeants and the other lieutenants weren't at work, they would call Mike to stand in for them. He could not be promoted to that office because he stood for truth, because he would not back down. So let's talk about marketplace truth. That, that would be the best. It's costly. Let's talk about, um, you know, is it marketable for a politician to say, you don't kill little children unless you want to forfeit your life. If they do that, they will forfeit their chance of their position in the marketplace of government. Now, would you agree with that? Well, what, 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 you, what were you having in mind on the, uh, on the latter one you were talking about? I'm talking about when you're running for office, have, have, we've seen every politician, even the one that one that I personally admire the most say that you know that that a Christian could possibly vote for that they that they are against the killing of innocent children that they've been abortion against abortion from uh, from the time that it was ever legalized in America all these politicians are old enough that are running for Republican office and they are saying they're against abortion and there's not one that has petitioned the government of Kansas, that who, who are running for our president to protect, to be instead as a leader of America, and they are not going down and saying to the governor of Kansas, who proclaims to be pro-life, free Scott Roeder. He simply defended babies that were being ripped out of the womb, babies that the doctor knew was a baby, because he actually for extra money would baptize the children either before or after he killed them and then have a funeral service for them. Where is the truth in that marketplace? Mm -hmm. The marketplace of, of what they call politics. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Truth mm -hmm. in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther had a famous saying, I can't remember word for word, but it's something like, uh, to stand for truth, it doesn't, uh, you, you, counts when you where uh, lies are attacking, not where lies aren't attacking. Now, for example, we have the five fundamentals of faith that a lot of denominations believe in. Now, today there's no cost to assert those five fundamentals of faith. Really? When they were originated, there was. You could be burned at the stake for, for saying some of those things. Today, it's, uh, we use it to judge each other. What are these five fundamentals you were t you having in mind here? Oh, things like uh, the virgin birth, you know, those kind of things. Resurrection and yeah. Okay. Uh, now, now, um, well, let's see. Martin Luther's point was that in a, in a battle, it if, if you hold the line where the enemy isn't attacking. That isn't that isn't the test of of your your valor as a soldier. It's it's where you need, you need to attack. You need to defend your defend your nation where the enemy is attacking. So so when we're talking about standing for truth, we're standing about we're stand, talking about standing for precisely those truths which are most unthinkable, most controversial. Mm -hmm. The ones which will cost you the most for people afraid to agree with you because they don't want to pay the cost either.
standing for the truth, where which, which is that issue? The one that has, is that issue is what we need to stand for, in particular. Mm -hmm. Well, today you might say that people aren't so much fighting for general civil liberties; those are pretty well established. People, uh, people are uh, voting of both sexes. That used to be an issue about the so so so. What's the point? Right. Or, or just simply. I guess women's rights or yeah, standing uh, against standing against slavery was once a, a great valorous right. thing to right. do, but it isn't now. It takes no courage to stay, stand up and say you're against slavery today. <laughs> <laughs> so there's been many times in my life when I've thought of what Jesus might be asking of me next, and I thought, oh no, not this again. Another thing I gotta give up. Okay, so I gotta do it. Hmm. Tell me about things like that in your life. Uh, the thing for the moment. Well, I, I, one comes to mind. It's a, simply that when I found a school that uh, that I wanted to go to, um, when I was at the University of Maryland, I was studying uh, studying English. I'd majored in, in English, and I was. Um, Taking the uh, various literature courses and enjoying them, but more than that, I was I was reading the Bible at uh, at night uh, in my room, and after a while, I desired just to study it specifically and get into it in more depth. And I ended up transferring off to a Christian college, and was so happy because this is the the thing I really wanted to study, and I was loving it, uh, taking courses in. In, in biblical books, in uh, survey courses in the whole Old Testament, survey courses in the New Testament, etc., and uh, and enjoying my professors and enjoying the environment, and uh, you ended up a pastor, an ordained pastor of what church? A Lutheran church, an uh, independent uh, uh, Lutheran organization, um, one of the smaller uh, denominations that that, that uh, is in, in the United States. Back in the old days, before the current configuration of the yes. churches, well, yes, apart from that one, actually, that what's now the uh, the, lar the larger ELCA that most people are familiar with. But anyway, in this school, which was like a, a haven now, uh, w where I could uh, study with other people who were also Christians who were loving the church, right in the middle of that comes uh, an issue. There was uh, there was someone in the midst of what I thought was supposed to be just us Christians studying, there was uh, 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 some folks come, who came from another another school which was uh, actually, a, a, you would call it a, a heretical type of school, uh, and another group, another denominational group that was, was not orthodox in, in affirming the scriptures and, and, the, and, and the, tr the trinity. And, uh, and, and here this fellow was here among us and was going to be graduated um, uh, with us and out representing to other <laughs> churches and other other uh, organizations a, a Christian school. And I remember being so so uh, taken uh, f offense there in that situation, thinking, how can they how can they have this this gentleman, sincere or good as he might be, who holds a, who holds really a, a contrary view, a, a heretical view, how can he be graduated from here and go out and represent the school to other, to, uh, other, other churches and, 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 and represent truth to them? And it became a big, a, a big issue to me. Uh, and, and one might argue other reasons why it was no problem or no, no issue, but to me it was a big issue. So I ended up running around uh, disturbing everyone running around with a petition and, and some means of trying to arouse opposition to this thing. Wow. And it wasn't that the, it wasn't the young, the, the, the fellow was, was a bad guy or a disruptive what, person. What, but year, what year was this? This was, uh, let's see, I went out there in about 74, I guess it was, 75, mid-70s. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, and so it was, to, to me, it was, it was a big issue for me because I had found a place where sound teaching was being taught People were being were going to be sent out, representing and teaching Christian the Christian truth, Christian doctrine to other people. And uh, anyway, that that was 
to me, it was an issue that needed to be needed to be fought, and so I was running around and, and becoming a little uh, uh, what do you call it, an activist on the on the campus there for several weeks and uh, months, I guess it was. Well, was there an anticipation that that would be costly to you? Well, I, I, I guess the, the cost simply would have been I might I was considering maybe I need to leave, <laughs> and I, I didn't want to leave because I I liked the, the environment, I liked the, the my fellow students, I liked I liked the teachers. Um, yeah, it would have been me, me possibly leaving. Um, I, that, way, that, that was that was a consideration for me. I didn't know where I'd go, but I, it was it was it was disturbing enough that I I, would, I, I felt like I would have might it might might it might may have needed to break company with these people or force a change. So that was even before you were an abortion activist. Yes. Yeah, it was a thing of, of uh, again, it was just, it just, it was seizing truth, and and uh, trying to be faithful to it, I guess, loving it really, I think. So there was a time later where, uh, let's see, come to think of it, have you ever publicly said whether you actually burned the abortion clinics? No, I meant to interrupt you earlier and say you misrepresented my uh, statements, or, or I, I, you're representing what others have concluded rather than what I have assented. You've not, you've not publicly said one way or the other, is that right, correct? Right. Although you served time in jail for it. Yeah. And, uh, but did you plead innocent? No. You pled guilty. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, I pled, pled innocent. You pled, I pled innocent. innocent. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the first time. The first went, time, yeah, went to trial, was was convicted, and then had an appeal, was reversed, went back to the court, and entered what's called seeing a, a new a new pile of charges brought against me, to, which is traditional uh, for for courts to try to force a uh, some type of plea. Uh, so the I had extra years stacked up and was facing even more than I was earlier. Uh, which may have been whittled down, but it was all part of the uh, the means, I guess you would say, that the prosecutors sometimes use in desperation to get a, res a resolution. Anyway, I, I replied then with, rather than a, a, a simple guilty, or excuse me, uh, a plea of innocent, I entered a, what's called a, an Alford plea, which is essentially a no-low no low contender, in, in, in essence. But what it is, an Alfred plea is, is a, I'm sorry to take up all your time explaining it, but if you, if, if you want a simple reply, it's simply, it is that, it is a, it says, I enter a guilty plea, but I admit no guilt. <laughs> and, uh, and so I got f six years. Um, well, the fact that you uh, do not uh, publicly say that you did not do it, yeah. combined with the fact that you wrote a book justifying it, mm -hmm. uh, could lead some people to suspect maybe you did do it. It might well. No. <laughs> it can't be. Not necessarily, though. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, your involvement, if, if not in actually burning abortion <coughs> clinics, your, your stand you took in, in, in writing the book, uh, you, 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 you must have come to a time where you thought, oh no, this is going to cost even more than, than I even thought before when I told Jesus I would follow him wherever he wants me to go. Did you ever think that? Well, you... Did you ever look forward to the cost with dread? It, it sometimes seems a, a happier thing to to just um, live live a life of, uh, of without a spotlight and and uh, without a lot of attention and a lot of the trouble. Um, it, like it would be more enjoyable, and yet, and, and, and in many ways, I. I 
yeah, I, I enjoy a peaceful life. I enjoy peace. I enjoy peacefulness. Um, and and, and I, I suppose you could say I enjoy excitement, too, although I, I sometimes don't like too much of it. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Let's define, but, but, but that, let's define too much. How many times have you been on, on national talk shows or yeah, that, news interviews? Yeah, oh, uh, quite couple, a bit. A couple of hundred, maybe? Oh, yeah. Se several hundred radio and TV and another few yeah. hundred on print. And how many million dollars have you been sued for and lost? I owe a million now to Planned Parenthood. Only one million? Yeah. And because of that, you can't work because obviously you're not going to you're, you're not going to do anything that would cause that would cause plant, plant, plant baby killers to become enriched. I don't want to earn any money for them. That's true. I don't want to earn them any money. Uh, that would be bothersome to one's conscience. Um, uh, but um, what was I going to get to the? Um, Of something. Like Think of something. I, I forgot. Yes, yes, yes help me. Why you're thinking. Yeah. I thought of something where you say, you asked, where does truth come with dread? Is that what yes. you're asking? Yes. With, with an impending dread yes. that you're going to lose everything. I loved my radio show. I thought it. I thought it was so cool to be on the radio. I thank God every day, every week when I did my radio show. I thank God for that privilege. Then a man named Paul Hill called me, mm. and he said, "Did he call you too?" And he caused he me just, so much trouble. He calls people. He did. He called me, and he said, uh, "I want you to sign this statement." And it says, uh, "It simply said uh, that if if Michael Griffin shot David Gunn in the defense of of the unborn, we the undersigned." what uh, affirm. Uh, affirm the justice in defending the life of an unborn the same as we would a born child therefore all godly action uh, force if necessary mm -hmm. should be taken to defend an unborn child mm -hmm. just, just like just for background michael griffin was the first man to shoot an abortionist mm -hmm. david gunn was the first abortionist shot yes by and, michael mm -hmm. and so then paul hill wrote up this defensive action statement, he called it, and, and scoured the country for people to sign it. And Regina and I were one of about 20 or 22, and Mike, who signed that. And I, that, I looked at that statement, I thought, oh no. Mm -hmm. it's, I can't not sign it because it's true. Mm -hmm. I can't sign it because I'll lose my business. And what happened? I'll lose my chance to become a state representative. I'll lose my friends. But it's true. I can't deny the truth. So what you went through too? Dread. I said, why did Paul Hill have to call me? I didn't even know who he was. I didn't even have... Who gave him my name? I was so mad. But I said, okay, I'll read it. And, and he read it to me. And uh, I said, well, yes. Yes, I'll, I'll have to sign that. I'll have to sign that. That's the truth. And then I said, well, if I sign this, if, it, if it's really the truth, and Christ has called me to proclaim the truth, to tell the truth, not to just know the truth and hide it within myself, but to tell it, if this man, this this man of God, this Presbyterian minister, asked me to sign this this petition, I must not only sign it, but I must have him on my radio show next week, and I must tell everybody the justice of doing this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I, uh, I'll tell you, it was dread. It was sleepless nights. And the reason it was dreadful was because we know that very few people are are gonna are gonna react to the truth with any particular interest when it's truth that 
costly. And most people are going to most people are going to look at that and think uh, that's unthinkable. Those conclusions are unthinkable. It doesn't matter if the logic is 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 irrefutable. It leads to an unthinkable result. Therefore, it is wrong. So Dave is basically saying those that do not love the truth, though they know the logic of it, though they know that it's truth, because truth speaks for itself, are people who don't think. It's unthinkable to them. No, I, they will not think it through. There's something else I figured out, too. Uh, all, every human being has their blind areas. And... Uh, my, one of my blind areas is when it comes to cleaning my room. But uh, I, there's, there's just every human being I've met, no, even some of you, I, I, I come to a certain point in a certain direction on a certain subject and I find, oop, there's a wall, can't get, can't get around it. It's, um, so with that knowledge we can relate to each other but still, it's a it's a huge it's a huge problem. Well, there there's there's a really theological way to put that, Dave. Have you not heard that? You've not heard the theology of that. No one knows the truth but me and thee, and I'm not sure about thee. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it is in church. Iron that, sharpens you're iron. You're quoting second controversies. <laughs> yes. Or is that second denominations? Did you think? What did it cost? What did you think when Paul Hill asked you to sign that? Did you just readily jump? And well, by that time you'd was, already been in jail. Yeah. So, um, was there any additional cost to signing that? No, actually, I was writing it with him. We were designing it <laughs> together. Ah. And the He's truth, the yeah. one. Now the truth comes yeah. out. Yes. Yeah. And the idea was was to show that this wasn't something that it was just a, a, a few people. This was this was uh, a, this was a legitimate doctrine. It and, <laughs> and it was. And and um, uh, you know in fact um, Around that same time, there was a poll taken of uh, the, the, down in Florida, I think, in fact. Uh, I think it was maybe it was what it was reported out of. And the number of people around the country, and, and, I, and I noticed it, 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 it going up, when it, the issue of what, do you, what is your response to this? Is this some type of justifiable action, justifiable action with, with regard to uh, the do, doing harm to abortionists? And the numbers were, you, you would see, I would notice on radio shows, when it, from the time it first occurred with Griffin moving on up over the next two years, three, two or three years, there would be, I would do these radio shows, a lot of radio shows, and the call-ins, the call-in numbers were, were increasing over time of people who agreed with it. And after, after, uh, I, after a couple of years, after, after Griffin, there was a, a poll taken. Um, and three three percent of the population affirmed the legitimacy of of this action. They call it justifiable homicide. Now that's remember the numbers of homosexuals. Yes. It was about two percent, maybe one yes. and a half percent, two percent. So you, you you it's a nice little fact to point out that there are more people who believe in justifiable homicide concerning abortionists than there are homosexuals. It's not, and yet you wouldn't know that by conversation with people because people are quiet. People don't want to. People don't want to speak it because it costs them something. That's what I was trying to say, Mike. Yeah. Once you knew that truth, because it was truth, you know, then you, then you have a responsibility. When you know the truth, and the truth sets you free, you have a responsibility. To proclaim the truth, you do. So that's why people don't want to know the truth, 
They do not want the responsibility, the duty, the, the stance before Almighty God who gave you that revealed truth in whatever way it was. You cannot go without then proclaiming it because you are an ambassador of that truth, you are a steward of that truth, and you have the responsibility to proclaim that truth. So that's why people don't want to know the truth now. They not, want not only do not want to know the truth, but condemn anyone who proclaims it. And So we've been talking about abortion. This is also true, of course, with sodomy. For even using the word sodomy, I tell people, God uses the word. I'm, I believe in God. Why shouldn't I use the word that God uses? How, how can it be hate to use the word choices of a God of love? Uh, Islam. Of course, there are many peaceful Muslims, and, and Romans 2 actually says that uh, people who have never heard of the Bible, some of them are, are shown to live by the principles of God better than people who do have the Bible. And yet, uh, chapter 3 begins to talk about the difference of uh, the value of the Bible compared with other uh, imposter religions. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's true that Islam is a, is a, is a, a hate-filled, violent theology and yet to say that is very costly in this generation. And, and yet to not say it is causing our, our, our nation to, um, treachery. To, to not be able to defend itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There is, again, the, the, the question is, I think, do, do, we love, do we love peace? Do we love truth? Do we love peace more than truth, or do we love truth more than peace? And I think I think there's a, there, there's a question of, of priority there. Um, Kitty, do you have a testimony? Uh, was there a time, ever a time in your life when you saw that something was true that you didn't know before, and that you saw that to ac acknowledge this truth would cost you something? I can't think of anything offhand. It's caught me offhand. Okay. But I'll say one thing. The way I looked at how I become so pro-life was because the Bible says God said that whoever sheds innocent blood by God by man shall his blood be shed. So you think, am I pro-life? You know, because uh, who are you going to believe? Who are you going to trust? God or man? You know. So you don't have any choice if you're a Christian. Do you think so? Not much. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about these things as I was, uh, I was thinking about publishing or printing a book that I've uh, had on my website for a long time, written by Johnny Brokoft. Johnny Brokoft uh, uh, wasn't any game playing about his uh, confession about whether he, di he did what he did. He burned down uh, two abortion clinics. The first one was the one where the partial birth abortion method was pioneered. Is that a mix of names? Was that Martin Haskell? I cannot remember. I believe so. Martin Haskell in Ohio. It was Nathanson. Bernard Nathanson? No? I don't think so. No. Uh, it was Cincinnati, Ohio, and he wrote this book, and, and I, I published the Prayer and Action News, and he sent it to me a chapter at a time, and I printed it a month, one uh, in, in each successive month, and called it the Brokoff Report, which is a, it used to be a, T, a news, a CBS News uh, segment called the Brokoff Report, and his name is Brokoff, so... And it's really a spellbinding book. It's marvelously well written. It's, it's kind of the edge of the seat type thing. You can't, you can't. Once you start reading it, you can't just lay it down. It's not, it's not uh, heavy and theological like something I would write. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and, and one of the things he starts off talking about is how the facts of abortion came to him in such a way that he saw that he had to act. He found himself putting himself in the place of those babies about to be tortured the next day and wondering how, what God would want of him and what he would want if he were one of those babies, what he would want of someone else like Johnny was. Now this book should be a bestseller, just like your book should be, with only one problem. The conclusion is unthinkable because it once you consider the evidence and think, huh, it looks like it's, I can't refute it. Maybe it's true. Once you think that way, you have to pay a cost. This is such a hurdle, I don't know how to get over it. Because I, I would love to share these these uh, these wonderful truths, but uh, there's so much appetite for them. <laughs> Lack of appetite. Yeah. Let, it, let us go to the conclusion of the matter as Ecclesiastes says. Let me tell you, there is so much fear and trepidation in your, in your, in your stomach's growling, and, but you know you have to speak the truth once you know it, once you're given that privilege of knowing the truth. But once you do it, what freedom, what joy. i got to say I knew more... Of, I'm so glad I did. You know, I'm not I'm not a coward. I'm not cowering under a burden of 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 cowardice and enslavement of falsity. I know the truth and I'm not afraid to say it and I'm going to stand up for it and come what may, what are they going to do to me? What can they do to me? I belong to Christ. You know, I'm, I'm really glad you you know, reminded me of that perspective and it's absolutely true. I feel the same freedom, and it doesn't even require us to be, to arrogantly proclaim that we have the truth, that we proclaim the truth and you don't know it, but rather, our position is, we're not afraid to assert the truth as well as we're able to comprehend it. And that very, that very fearlessness, that very fearlessness uh, enables us to well, it, it drives us to trust then in God because as we see men withdrawing from us and our support drawing, withdrawing from us, we have to rely on the promises of God to sustain us uh, when we seek first the kingdom of heaven. And it turns out God does. Absolutely. What, what is that saying, Mother? A thousand, a, thousand, a coward dies a thousand deaths, but... but it, but a brave man, but one, you know? How many yes. years has it been since you've been able to work, Mike, and yet you're not on the street yet? Well, they first began to, well, we, we got sued about 1995. So give a little, a little bit of an overview of that case. Well, it went back to um, initial lawsuit with FACE. Uh, uh, FACE, so let's... Uh, freedom, freedom of access to clinic entrance passed in 93 or 94? 94. 94. Um, and then that was applied uh, Just a little bit more about FACE. It, it put draconian penalties for what previously had been like 30 days in jail. All of a sudden right. it turned into two years in jail. For sitting in front of an abortion clinic once is two years. For sitting there twice is five years. Right. And, and by the time you, you sit there three or four times, the penalty is about the same as if you just shot the abortionist. Right. <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> People started shooting abortionists. Yeah. Anyway, People go ahead. started counting the cost. Well, I might as well. Right. They they actually shot themselves in the foot on that one, didn't they? In a way, we could say it exacerbated and brought about the very thing they were they were alleging. Wanting they made it stop. impossible to stop abortion by any lesser means. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Right. And so, um, yeah, so that was passed, I, guess, I think, in, in 94. And then soon after that, they applied it, well, very quickly to uh, Regina. To and her Regina, bullhorn. Right, right away. <laughs> right away, Regina, for, blowing a, for her bullhorn. Right. Free to, uh, 
Blow the trumpet in Zion. Right. Yes. They, they, they defended abortion so, against Regina's speech. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that, well, there's, there's, a, there's a story right there. How, how are you blocking access? <laughs> they were just so darn scared of me, they couldn't go in. Uh, <laughs> remember how it's written. Remember what, what you can't do? Yes. You're not allowed to, what are, the, what are the operative words? Interfere, harass, or threaten anybody that's trying to get in, trying to come into an abortion facility and get women uh, uh, And you weren't accused care. of any of those things. But, but, but look, how, look how flexible those are. Interfere, harass, threaten. You weren't accused of threatening. I was accused of threatening. You were? There you yes. go. That, that's, that's kind I of said over the bullhorn, we had an abortionist in town, and, and there was a big government building. It, it, it used to house... Oh, oh uh, you, 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 you're a threat. You were accused of quoting scripture. Let which, me tell which you, the, the, the judge uh, had already locked up people without cause, men, old men, for, for day, months and months without cause, had unjustly locked them up even without a trial, and uh, then was going to open this huge, was going to grant this huge uh, city building the zoning rights to become the biggest, it would have been the largest abortion clinic in the Midwest. Well, this building was a city building and it was condemned. Well, when he went in there, for some reason, unexplainable, everyone said it was unexplainable, he just stepped off in, into an elevator shaft, took a step down, dove face first into rat filth, used hypodermic needles, urine, feces, and died, fittingly. And so I said in front of the abortion clinic, and, 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 and the abortion owners were all friends of this judge, and all of Planned Parenthood's directors were friends of this judge, and I said, God has struck down Judge Michael Colburn, and he will strike down other abortion judges, pro-abortion judges. And for that, they stuck the face, that was the, the cap that stuck the face bill on me. And the federal judge, Judge Joseph Stevens, uh, said that I was threatening judges, and I was threatening him. I said, no, Your Honor, I said, God has struck down Judge Michael but, Coburn. And I the, said, unlike the, you, the I was, do not believe I'm God. But the ruling was schizophrenic in that it did not enjoin you from further threats. It enjoined you from using the bullhorn. <laughs> you could only shout those threats. I, I didn't ever get that, but, uh, you know. What are you going to do? Anyway, proclaiming the truth does have a cost. It costs us a lot of time, <laughs> lots of things. And, and I, I do want to say that the Brokoff Report was uh, is one of my most treasured possessions. I have all volumes, and, and they're put in a bookcase. And I, I would highly encourage you to publish that. It's, it's an excellent... Anybody will be inspired. If, if you meet Johnny Brokoff, you will be inspired. You have minutes to talk with Mike Bray, you will be inspired. You have minutes to talk with Dave Leach, his wife Dorothy, my mother, you will be inspired that the truth will only enrich your life. If you refuse to, to acknowledge truth, because once you acknowledge truth, then you're going to have to do something with it. The, the simplest thing is to proclaim it. And then others will say, yeah, that's right, or else they won't. But then the, the more you refuse to proclaim and accept that truth, uh, the more that it comes imperative that people must act. For the truth will be upheld one way or the other. What is the cost of uh, denying the truth? Dying a coward's thousand deaths. Deny the truth, you deny Christ, and, you, and, and you're in hell forever. I mean, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So those that love truth love Jesus. 
those who hate truth do not love Jesus. It's that simple. You don't love the truth. You're a coward of the truth. And I can't. And the Bible says perfect love casts out fear. Where is your perfect love? It should be in the words of truth and defending the truth. Listen, and loving the truth. Listen, how about the short-term cost? The, the cost here on earth. The cost of denying the truth. Of being afraid to proclaim it. Well, let's see. You have no Proverbs 17, 17, friends, if you do that. You can smooth your way through life like, let's say, Hillary Clinton does or or some of the other. But you, and, and, you can, and you could steal from people and be rich and fat and gluttonous and drug addicts all you want to. But And you can proclaim all the, that you have all the relationships in the world, all the sex you want. But where is your real love? You have not the love that, the, the one that sticketh closer than a brother. You, ha, you don't have real friends that will love you at all times because your whole life is a compromise and it's a shell and it's a phony. I mean, to me, that's what, what the things that, that you are giving up to, to not know the truth and say it such more, such a dreaded cost. How could you not do it? So tying in your 1717 there uh, for us who, who can't remember what it, that says. Is that the one about the truth? No, that that is the one that says a friend loveth at all times. A friend loves at all times. Yeah, because you, you refuse to go. Once you refuse the truth, then you refuse to go around people who love the truth because you're convicted that they know the truth and you know they're right, so you hate their guts. And so you, you don't you, you really start going around with a bunch of phony, miserable people, and you, you know, don't have. That, that's absolutely friends. right. And, and as a nation, as a, when a whole nation does it, or when a, a large section of the nation does it, that that means that we we tolerate uh, sin more and more for that very reason. We don't want to be around righteous people who will convict us, who will tell us the truth. And that means that sin uh, becomes more and more of a threat. Crime rises. The cost of crime rises in uh, de degenerating our economy. We all become poorer. Uh, we become incapacitated in our ability to defend ourselves from foreign threats. And so we become at their mercy and, uh, and, and a tiny, insignificant military powers like Iran <laughs> or Afghanistan or Pakistan become terrifying to us <laughs> all because we blanched at the truth. Exactly. Our, our churches are now cool places to be. Our church buildings are now cool places to be. My gosh, they look just like the world now. There's no truth in the church that the goats are being entertained and the sheep are, the sheep that sit there, that Mike, Mike, they are you, starving. You, with your hundreds of interviews that you've done with network news anchors, uh, you've, you've, you've had the experience of presenting simple, irrefutable truths to them and seeing them just blow it off as if there's an impenetrable wall and there's just no, it's irrelevant whether it's true. Can, can you analyze or can you give us a window of what it's like? It is, it, of it is. how they think, of the, any frustration you feel? And <laughs> well, you know, it, it's a curious thing, but I, I guess it takes me, it, it, it moves me back to, to my childhood whenever I would look at television, um, there was never, you know, whatever, whether it was even just a regular program, a, a, a drama show, or, or somebody talking, there was never any mention of God. Um, you know, my little daughter just said to me the, uh, about a year or so ago, when I was walking her to school, we happen to have these latter ones, I'm... You know, that's a good point, because... In, in 
in an environment where even God is considered irrelevant, and we should not be surprised that the truths about abortion should be. Yeah, because the, the well, my my daughter said to me they about her teachers. One day she just said out of the blue, and I, and I can't explain all the whole context. I don't have time to go into it all, but she says, "I don't like school." I said, "Why?" Because they don't talk about God. And if they don't talk about God, they can't teach me. How old is she? She's not. She's eight now. She was about six. Oh, uh, uh, if you ever get tired of her, send her away. Five, five or six. Now, we, wow. we managed to teach. She is in a government school, unlike the older ones, the very older ones. But we have her in a small town school, which is not really all that bad otherwise. Now, they do manage to leave God out, but they, they, we, we supplement plenty. And she gets by in this school, as it is now. There are a lot of other good things in it. And I don't need to go into the, the selection of that particular school and why we did and so forth. But the, the point is that, yes, when, when God is taken out of the picture, then, then, then people, it falls on deaf ears when you try to talk about right, real right final absolute right and absolute wrong or or a standard from which to to to, to dis, discover in any given or, situation or, or, or was right. clear logic yeah 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 if you if you don't have a, a a standard you don't have we don't if we don't have a law from god we don't have a word from god telling us giving us a moral standard we're we're, we're really we're really in, in in a state of confusion and uh and so, yes, uh, the, the folks who do interviews aren't used to talking about that or taking it seriously. They somehow to want, want to work out a world and the problems of the world by some type of uh, democratic process or let, how does it affect the environment or uh, how does it affect rights, whatever those are, however those are defined from, gen, from decade to decade. Um, th th there is no standard for of law that, 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 that is fixed. And yet it's so ironic because some of, some of those people that you talk to are, are believers in God. And yet when they come on the show, they tell themselves they need to block God out. Yeah, we're coming into into the realm of, of a no God zone. So those, uh, <laughs> Bill O'Reilly's no God zone. No God zone. <laughs> <laughs> Well-meaning as those good conservative folks are, if you've got a no-God zone, you've got your limitations. And it leaves your logic about as crippled as if you didn't believe in God personally. So here we are in lovely Kansas, contemplating the um, State of the Union, I suppose, and what uh, what it's like to 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 speak to someone uh, from the media and. Uh, doing an interview to come up with some discussion concerning culture and society and and uh, things of of right and wrong and and uh, truth uh, issues whether it be abortion whether it be homosexuality um, uh, the, the question comes uh, what what View, can, can, can the Christian worldview be portrayed in the general media? And uh, I, I remember many times doing interviews where um, I had to always be somewhat guarded, knowing only certain materials would be would be brought forth. Uh, a, a strong case to be made for um, the relevance of God's law or the necessity of law. That comes from God, that is binding, that is that is universal. Well, it might be uh, related. It, 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 it could never be uh, something that's that's propounded uh, as as viable. Um, we, we live in a, in, a, in a time now where where God has and, and the idea of God's law and the idea of the relevance of God's law as as uh, something that can really be applied and, and laid as a foundation for culture is, is rejected. 
um, and so that we are really without a a the, the true the, the true uh, the, 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 our, our our actual former foundation of of, uh, of Christianity as the as the cult from our culture. I've said that every uh, every culture has its cult, and the cult of the West, the cult of, of the Western world, has been Christianity, and it has been the the uh, the root of our, of our civilization. Um, uh, what we have in in our time today, and what 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 uh, uh, people I think don't really really uh, aren't facing, is the fact that we're we're trying to build a, really a new culture, but we haven't found out what the foundation of of the culture will be. What will be the new cult? Uh, and it seems to be some effort to to uh, to produce a uh, a society that that is godless in terms of law. Uh, while people might be free to to pursue in their own private worlds their various cults, their various religions, we somehow think, imagine that we can form a society, uh, a, the larger culture, without a a foundation in divine law, w without a true uh, foundation in in divine uh, law and rule for uh, as 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 the, as the basis for for uh, for law. Um, that's the quandary I think we find ourselves in, uh, uh, and, and it, it, it will lead to uh, to really a, a, a breakdown, um, uh, uh, factions, factionalism, uh, people arguing for one religion over another, um, but in fact one really must be, be uh, in order to have unity. You, you, there must be uh, a singular uh, source of law recognized, and if we as Christians uh, assert that it is uh, it is God's word that He has spoken, that He has given us truth, that truth has been revealed, uh, that in fact the resurrection of Christ is a fact, and from that fact uh, the the scriptures that that uh, are upheld by the one who rose from the dead. That true law is has been given to us. That we have a foundation for law given to us uh, by God Himself. That's been revealed to to us in the prophets, uh, in the in the scriptures. Uh, without without that, we we really are, are left to flounder. But uh, uh, and, and it is this it is this this truth this foundation which is which you mean is, all human law. Is left to flounder. Is left to flounder. Yes, human law is left to grope and, and look for uh, for some some way to root itself, and it and it is the in the absence of, of appeal to divine revelation, we have people appealing to uh, the popular vote or uh, some kind of vague reference to constitutional truth or constitutional rights or as as if somehow a constitution. Uh, apart from an underlying uh, divine foundation, uh, just a human, uh, humanly created constitution is somehow uh, uh, sufficient enough to to, to demand uh, uh, ultimate respect and uh, and on an enduring um, uh, regard. Uh, we're really left to, uh, uh, to to wander with without uh, without a, uh, an affirmation. That divine revelation has been given to us, uh, and 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 that and that that confidence is 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 assured us and and undergirded by not just an idea, a religious idea, but a fact, namely a, a, the fact of the resurrection, the the the, the miracle and the astounding message uh, and, and and power and truth that came that was demonstrated in the in the earth and in history in that resurrection. Stop.
Sun.